Japan is quietly trying to do something very big right now, and honestly, most people are not paying attention yet. Japan wants to come back to the top of the chip world. Not memory chips, not old factory stuff. I mean the most advanced chips on Earth. The kind of chips that power AI, smartphones, data centers, and future tech we don't even fully understand yet. And the company leading this comeback is called Rapidus. Now let me be clear from the start. Rapidus is not a small startup with big dreams. This is a national project. This is Japan saying, we're done depending on others. We want control again. So let's break this down slowly and simply. Rapidus was created in 2022, very recent, but from day one, it had serious backing. Japan's government is fully behind it, and not just with words, with money, policy support, and long-term planning. The main supporter is a government-backed group called NIDO, which works under Japan's trade and industry ministry. This already tells you something important. Rapidus is not just a company, it's Japan's chip strategy. Now look at who is backing Rapidus. We're talking about Sony, Toyota and Denso, Kioxia, big in memory chips, NTT, Japan's telecom giant, NEC, SoftBank, and Japan's biggest bank. This is like Japan's tech Avengers team. And recently, more than 20 extra companies said they want in. Car companies, camera companies, chemical companies, power companies, logistics companies, banks. Why does this matter? Because chip making is not just one factory. It's materials, power, water, software, tools, money, logistics, and Japan is pulling everything together. That's why this feels different. So what is Rapidus actually building? They are building a very advanced chip factory in Hokkaido, in a place called Chitose, near Sapporo. Cold region, stable land, plenty of space, good for factories. And this factory is not for old chips. The goal is to start two nanometer chip production in 2027. Let me pause here. Two nanometer chips are cutting edge. This is where TSMC and Samsung are fighting right now. This is where Apple, Nvidia, and AI companies want to be, and Japan wants to enter right there. Even crazier, Japanese media says Rapidus wants to move to 1.4 nanometer chips before 2030. That is future level tech. Now, let's be honest, Rapidus is late to the party. TSMC already plans mass 2 nanometer production in 2025. Samsung has already started 2 nanometer production. Intel is still struggling, around 1.8 nanometers around 2027. So yes, Rapidus is playing catch up. But here's the interesting part. They're not trying to beat TSMC in size. They're not trying to flood the world with cheap chips. They're trying to be fast, advanced, and flexible. And this is where things get really interesting. Rapidus is working with IBM. Yes, that IBM. IBM already developed a 2 nanometer chip process, and Rapidus is working with them to turn that research into real production inside Japan. This is huge. IBM doesn't run giant foundries like TSMC, but their research is world class. Rapidus is basically saying, give us the brains, we'll build the factory. Smart move. But wait, Rapidus is doing something even different. They're pushing AI into chip design itself. Chip design is usually slow, expensive, and painful. It can take years and cost millions just to design one advanced chip. Rapidus wants to change that. They announced something called RAADS. Don't worry about the name. Here's the simple idea. You tell the system what kind of chip you want. AI helps design it faster. AI helps fix problems earlier. AI helps optimize speed, power, and size. They claim this could cut design time by 50%, cut design cost by 30%. If that even half works, that's a big deal. This is perfect for startups, AI companies, and anyone who doesn't want to wait forever like they do with TSMC. They already announced two tools. One tool helps generate chip designs using AI. Another tool helps predict performance and fix issues early. This means fewer surprises later, less wasted money. 
Again, this is not about beating TSMC at scale. It's about being smarter and faster. Now, let's talk about the global picture. Right now, TSMC controls about 70% of the global chip foundry market. Samsung, around 7%. Intel, still struggling. That's dangerous, because most advanced chips are made in Taiwan, and Taiwan is in a very sensitive geopolitical situation. Countries are nervous. Japan is nervous. The US is nervous. Europe is nervous. Rapidus gives Japan something very important. Options. If something happens in Taiwan, Japan doesn't want to be stuck waiting. This is also why Rapidus is working with TensorTrend, a company that designs AI and RISCV chips. These are the kinds of companies that want alternatives to NVIDIA and AMD, and they may prefer Japan over Taiwan or China. Stable country, strong government support, trusted partners. That's part of the long-term play. In November, the Japanese government officially named Rapidus as a national chip operator. That's huge. It means priority support, fast approvals, long-term funding, political protection. Japan is all in. So the big question, can Rapidus really rival TSMC and Samsung? Short answer, not yet. Long answer, they don't need to beat them right now. If Rapidus can successfully make 2 nanometer chips by 2027, move toward 1.4 nanometers later, attract AI and advanced chip clients, prove their AI-based design tools work, then Japan is back in the game. Not number one, but relevant. And in this industry, relevance is power. This feels like Japan saying, we missed the smartphone era. We missed the early AI boom, but we are not missing the next wave. And honestly, this is one of the most serious chip projects outside Taiwan, Korea, and China. No hype, no loud marketing, just factories, money, partners, and patients. And that's very Japanese. This story is just getting started.